So now let's talk about how we use the Redis server. So the idea is that we have a Redis server and each station, station zero and station one, are both going to open two connections to this server. One is a regular connection which is open and which will be used to send commands, which we call the main connection. And the other is a subscription and it's to receive uh, messages on a um, published subscribe channel. So they both open these two connections. And you can see what you can see at the bottom of the screen here is the pink for the main connection here and the pink for the subscription connection here. Now, how does this work in practice? So um, on the Redis server, we have an array in which we store the different lines that constitute the drawing. So let's say that we have a, an original line which is stored in the array. And then let's say that on station zero, a new line is drawn. So what is going to happen is that it's going first to add the line data in the array, like this. Then it's going to send a message to the, the channel, the published subscribe channel, and this message is going to contain the range of values which has been added to the array. So basically it's the index of the first, uh, uh, the first data point and the last data point that have been added here. So we are transmitting this range in the published subscribe channel. So this means that this will be automatically received on the subscription connection by the other station. So the other station is going to receive the indices that make the range where the new data has been added. So then it, it can request this range from the server and it's going to get the new data like this. So you might wonder why do something that complicated? Why not just send the data directly in the channel and why use this uh, two-state system? Well, the, um, the big advantage of doing this is that uh, if you restart a station, then what is going to happen? Let's say we restart station number one. What is going to happen is that at start, it's going to request the entire array. So it, it asks for the entire array. There is a special way in Redis to, to say we want that. So it's going to get the, the complete data. And this allows to redraw the, um, the entire drawing on the screen. So this is how it works. Uh, when you reset the, if I reset the Arduino, uh, it's like this that it's able to, um, to download again all the data and to recover it. Finally, a last thing we do is that we ping the Redis server regularly to check that the connection is still working. This is to ensure two things. First, this is to check that the connection is still working because the last thing we want is for the user to realize that we are not connecting anymore when, uh, when they want to uh, draw something. So uh, we want to know if we are uh, disconnected. Um, and the second reason is that if we don't set any data for some time, the, um, the server is actually going to disconnect us because it's going to think that the connection uh, is dead. Finally, you might wonder what is this circuit for and the one which is there. Uh, this is actually part of an auto reboot system. I wanted the project to be able to work without any maintenance and without the requiring the user to perform anything uh, like uh, um, rebooting it regularly or uh, if it crashes, rebooting it manually. So I wanted the system to monitor itself uh, in case there is any issue and to restart itself automatically. As I explained earlier, we had to use two Arduinos because of conflict issues on the SPI bus. But we can take advantage of that. Since we have two Arduinos, we can actually make each Arduino monitor the other and in case the other Arduino gets stuck, uh, it can restart it uh, automatically. So you may know that on each Arduino, you have actually um, a reset pin, uh, which is where this uh, white wire is coming to. 
So you see it's really reset here and you have the same on the other uh, Arduino here. Um, and uh, the way it works is that if you pull low uh, this pin and then um, stop pulling it low, then it's going to restart the Arduino. So first, to detect that the other Arduino is dead, we use the alive messages that we have talked about earlier in the serial communication uh, part. So now let's suppose we don't receive any alive message from the other Arduino uh, for one minute. Then we are going to restart it automatically. Also, when you restart the UX Arduino, it's also restarting automatically the Wi-Fi Arduino. So to do that, an obvious way, we would need to connect an output pin, a digital output pin, to the reset pin of the other Arduino and do the reverse. But uh, if we did that, uh, there would be some issues, which is that when an Arduino is rebooting, then the, um, the voltage is going low, so it's going to put low the other Arduino, which is going to reboot too, which is going to put low this one, and we would uh, reach some sort of deadlock situation. Uh, so, so a possible solution would be to invert the output so that it's a high output on the, on the, the output pin a high voltage on the output pin, which generates then a low voltage on the other side. So that could be a possibility. Uh, but then uh, when you, you switch on the Arduino, there are some interferences that are produced on the output pin, so it's not perfect either. So the solution I implemented is to use this circuit, which is uh, actually there, these are two circuits. It's the same uh, circuit uh, twice. Here is the schematic that uh, uh, is implemented here twice. So the idea is that uh, if, let's say, this Arduino wants to reset this one, then uh, it's going to pull high the, 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 uh, the output pin uh, number seven, which is here, and then this is going to this circuit. Then there is some transformation, and then it goes to the reset pin of the Arduino. And basically what it does, uh, so let me show you, I'm going to reset. So you are going to see an LED light up for a brief time which indicates that we are, uh, this Arduino is resetting that one. So after being rebooted manually, it reboots this one. And if we look at the oscilloscope of what happens, this is uh, what happens. So in, um, in yellow here, you have the signal from the, the Arduino, which is resetting the other. So uh, here is the UX Arduino. So it's going to, so it's an output. Uh, it's set as an output pin. Here it's going to go uh, high and then it goes low. And here in green, this is the, the, the signal you get on the reset pin of the reset Arduino. And the idea here is that I have used a, a, a capacitor here to, um, to make sure that we get rid of any artifactual variations. So basically, uh, the way we detect uh, artifact variation from real uh, reset instruction is that we charge the capacitor, which is why you have this curve here, and when it's charged enough, then it resets the other Arduino, and then it discharges right here. So this allows uh, each Arduino then to reset the other uh, reliably if it gets uh, stuck in, uh, let's say, an infinite loop or in a crash or anything. So like that, the system is able to continuously work without any manual reboot, like uh, forever. Thank you for watching this video. Share it if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see my future Arduino project.